Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial called Assembly and Power Flow Generation for Dynamic Simulation using Open IPSL, the Open Instance Power System Library. Uh, in this video, we will uh, construct a single machine infinite pass system using the aforementioned Modelica Library. My name is uh, Sergio Dorado Rojas, and this work was developed with my lab mates Josep Pelaera and Marcelo de Castro Fernandez and supervised by Dr. Luigi Bonfredi. So the outline of this presentation is as follows. First we will go through the installation of Gretcall, the Python library that we have used for generating the power flow results for our models. Then we will go step by step into the assembly of an, a phaser team domain model for the single machine infinite pod system from scratch using the Modelica based open IPSL library. Then on the third part we will integrate a power flow record so this is a, a form of data container into our model to handle power flow results. And finally we will populate those power flow results with uh, the, the output put of power of, of several powerful computations using the Python library Gretcall. So let's get started by describing in a nutshell the Gretcall installation process. So Gretcall is a, an open source Python library developed by Santiago Peñate and its main purpose is to uh, help engineers in power system planning computations. Gritcall can be installed either as a standalone package or using the Python manager pep. Uh, one of the main advantages of Gritcall is that it's cross-platform, so it can be used on Linux, uh, Windows, and Macintosh operating systems. But it also allows the user to work directly with a static representation of PSSE models. So you can input raw files describing already existing uh, networks that you work with in PSC and Gridcall will parse them into a suitable internal representation. A uh, quote's disadvantage of Gridcall is that it's not fully compatible with the popular and widespread Anaconda environment for data science and machine learning, but we have suggested an alternative installation procedure to use Gridcall alongside Miniconda. So basically the steps of this uh, guideline are the following. First, we have to download a Miniconda from the official website and install it on our machines. Then we create a new Python 3.7 environment. After that, we download Gridcall from the official GitHub repo or we clone it using Git. And in case you want to replicate exactly the same setup that we had in our machine for this tutorial, we recommend uh, you to revert your head to the hash 654FFD. Then after downloading Gridcall, unzip it or cloning it, you will navigate within your Conda environment to the Gridcall folder and you will um, go inside the SRC subdirectory. Then inside you will execute python mpip install dot and this command will install the Gridcall backend on your computer. Finally, it's not listed on the slide, but uh, in case you want to work with Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks, you should install that particular package using pip. So let's get started by uh, walking through this each of these steps uh, in a Windows machine. So here we are in a Windows machine where we will perform both the installations of uh, Miniconda and Gridcall. So let's get started by the Miniconda installation. Um, we will provide a step-by-step -step guideline to perform it in the, in the repo, but it's pretty straightforward and you can do it in a couple of minutes. So you should Google for Miniconda and then you download the latest either the 32 or the 64-bit version of the Miniconda 3 installer. Um, in our case we would download this one the Miniconda 3 for Python 3.9. So this version here is the version of the base Miniconda environment. It doesn't mean that you you cannot work with 
other mini uh, Python versions. So we will work with Python 3.7 as you we, as we will see later, but uh, the default base environment of Miniconda will have a Python 3.9 uh, native installation, sorry. So uh, I won't repeat the installation since uh, I have already Miniconda on my, on my system. So the next step after downloaded Miniconda is to open a command prompt and let me place it here and zoom it a little bit and we will create a new environment so to create a new environment we rewrite conda uh, create and and we type the name of the environment in our case is smib underscore tutorial and uh, right after we specify the python version that we will use that uh, in our case is python 3.7 so we run this and um, it's basically, well, we have a warning here that we don't have the latest version of Conda, but that's um, shouldn't affect the installation or, or the creation of the new environment. And then after a few seconds, we will have here an acknowledgement that our environment has been successfully created. So the next step is to activate our environment so we just type conda activate smib underscore tutorial or whatever name you have used for it and that's it so we will see here this parenthesis and then inside the parenthesis the name of the of the environment that we have just created so that's the first step uh the second step is to install great call so for great call you can also Google it, and then you will get the official repo for for grid call. And here, if you are familiar with Git, you can clone it, or you can just go to the late, latest release. And then here you scroll down and you download this source code zip. Um, you save it and you uh, unzip it in your computer so I will not uh, repeat it here in my case I have saved it to the default uh, downloads folder but so normally I would have uh, so the downloads folder folder would normally be located on the C drive or by, by default on the C drive unless you have changed your Windows installation but in my case since I am look since I'm using a virtual machine for Windows uh, I have to change my hard drive and then uh, then navigate to the downloads folder and then I will point to the grid call unzipped directory. So here we have all the files that are inside this uh, zip archive. So the next thing is to navigate inside the SRC directory. Since we are only interested in installing the grid call backend so we don't, we don't want a graphical interface for uh, for the time being uh, we just want the the library and um, so here inside we do python m pip install that so basically what this command does is to install inside the current environment uh, the files that are suitable to be installed inside the current directory so that will take care of the installation of Gritcal. So Gritcal is a huge package. It will take some time to complete. In my case, um, since I have installed Gritcal uh, before, I have a lot of uh, re uh, package prerequisites in in the um, in the memory already, so it doesn't take that long. So now. Grid call is installed, and the final step is to. So this is not this is not required, but it will help us illustrating the use of grid call and the tools that we have developed for integrating grid call with the, our Open IPSL models. So um, we will install an IDE. In this case, we will go for Jupyter Lab. So Jupyter Lab includes Jupyter Notebooks. And the way to do it is just uh, we do pip install Jupyter Lab, and that's it. So this is completely optional; it's not required, but we will do it just for illustration purposes. So after 
this is installed, um, we will test the grid call installation and check whether it has been successful or not. There are, you, you don't have to do it using uh, Jupyter Labs at all. You can do it uh, using the command line as we would do nextly. So let me clean this um, command prompt and that let's start Python and let's do from grid call that engine import all. Uh, I'm not sure, I think this should be capitalized. So if this command is successful, it means that every library and every dependency of grid call has been successfully installed. So we can work with the grid call directly. And it will take some time because as I have said uh, previously, grid call is a huge uh, package. But well, we had no problems importing grid call so we can exit and that's the way to validate the installation. So if you wanna do it in a Jupyter notebook, um, in right now we are standing on the grid call install installation directory. So we can just try to run one of the grid call examples uh, right out of the box. So let's wait until this Jupyter notebook, uh, until Jupyter lab loads. And here we would go uh, so we will go here. This is the folder where we are standing on right now. We go to tutorials and then we go to this one defining a grid from scratch and we can run all the all cells and see what happens. So this is a pretty straightforward example on how, cre on how uh, we can create a grid and run a power flow using grid call. So um, here we see that there is an error here, but probably because this example hasn't been updated for the latest version of grid call, but the rest, so the system has been created and it has, it had no issues um, at all running the, the power flow that actually the power flow is run here in this cell. So grid call is working fine in our environment. So the next step, this concludes the first part of the tutorial and then after this we will move to the assembly of the single machine infinite bus model using OpenIPSL.